Hey everybody. Hold on a second here. Let me get this situated. Uh, coming to you live again. <laughs> well, not really live by the time you watch this, but anyhow, I am uh, going to be loading content onto my onto my um, channel daily for a while. I promised people that I would vlog, and I've been wanting to do this for a while, so I'm going to. Uh, anyways, a couple of things real quickly. The reason I start out my videos by saying, hey friends, is that probably my favorite YouTuber in the world, his name is Otis Gibbs, and he's a country western musician. And he's also a historian and a great storyteller and has a lot of great content on his video about uh, country western stars and folk music and a lot of people on there who know a lot about um, um, who have had interactions with some of the legends of country western and everybody from Johnny Cash to Hank Williams and I just love his channel and he always starts it out by hey friends and his vibe is always just so peaceful and cool and he's just a really warm guy and I thought you know what as an homage to Otis I'm going to start out my videos with hey friends so there you go that's how that starts and then uh, the other thing that I wanted to uh, touch on is really today is really what what my channel is about number one it's a vlog because I'm setting out on a journey to work on some photography and writing projects across the United States. Um, you know, if, if you know me and you know some of my work, and I'll put a link to my work below, both my Flickr page and my website, you'll know that I do a lot of portrait work, and I've done a lot of street portrait work. I've done over 3,000 street portraits um, over, around the world, actually, and uh, um, I'm fascinated by street portraiture. I'm fascinated by people and the stories they have. And um, I've recorded a lot of people. I always carry my recorder when I do my uh, my portraits. And uh, so I'm fascinated by that work. And I and I love people. I love to capture what I think is their uniqueness and. Uh, try and give everybody an opportunity to stand in front of some of these subjects that I photograph uh, to see the connection that we have and to view the uniqueness and the beauty of everybody and to be surprised by people and who they are and the stories they have and the stories they wear on their face. So that's really how I got into that work and why it became such an obsession for me. And it really did. I mean, I spent, you know, probably 10 years running around just photographing people and listening to their stories and uh yeah it's been it's been wonderful it's been a wonderful process and i don't think i'll ever stop because i just love it so much and i love people so much so anyways that's what i do part of it i mean I do a lot of different kinds of photography i love landscape photography i love street photography uh studio photography but uh yeah, it's really drawn to street portraiture and to hearing people's stories and uh, making that connection. And I hope that helps you to make a connection with people that you might not otherwise run into or deal with. I decided to come down here today. I'm actually on the uh, Milwaukee lakefront and I'm in uh, um, this a state park here right behind a Summerfest grounds. And Summerfest is where they have, they build it as the largest musical festival in the world. but. It's a large parcel of property around the lakefront where they have a lot of different uh, sh uh, band shells and uh, venues for musicians who come in, and it's really wonderful. Now, I'm not a huge fan of Summerfest. It can turn out to be a drunk fest a lot of the time, but um, I do love this to, to come in to see the music acts and to just people watch. And they also do a lot of our ethnic festivals down here, like Irish Fest and German Fest and Festa Italiana and everything. But I am such a creature of the lake. I was born and raised in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and uh, I lived, I don't know, two, three blocks from the lake. So Lake Michigan is really in my blood, and I really have kind of a spiritual connection to the lake. I remember as a kid when I would feel troubled or when I would... 
you know, I've always been sort of a contemplative, sort of an introspective person. And when I would be contemplative or introspective, I would ride my bike or walk to the lake and sit on the hillside and look at the lake. And it really made me feel peaceful. I really felt a peaceful connection to the lake and its beauty and its power. And I'm a fisherman too, so I really enjoyed fishing on Lake Michigan. And it is just such a wonderful, wonderful asset. And for those of you who don't know Milwaukee, have heard shitty things about Milwaukee, come down and spend some time on the lakefront and you will walk away loving Milwaukee. It is really a beautiful, beautiful place. That's my Milwaukee pitch. But what is my channel about? Well, the n title of my channel is called Your Time Is Now. And the reason that I titled it that was because I had come to a point in my life where I was done waiting to take on some of these larger projects that I wanted to do. Everything that I have done over the course of the last 12 years of my photography life has been um, done uh, part-time because I've always had a full-time job. Some of the full-time jobs were better than other, some of the other full-time jobs, but I had a lot of full-time jobs. So everything I did was on the weekends or at nights or when I would have time off or vacation or whatever. And I felt time slipping away. Uh, you know, I'll be 63 in September. And I have worked really hard to develop my skills as a photographer. And I put a lot of time and effort into it. I've studied the history of photography a lot. I've gotten to know a lot of the uh, great uh, photographers of the last century and they've influenced my work. I've learned a lot. I've fallen in love deeper and deeper with photography as a result of the study that I've done. And I've also spent a lot of time, a lot of time uh, teaching myself the art of photography and learning how to do that. Um, I'm pretty much all self-taught and everything I've learned, I've learned through YouTube. And I always kiddingly tell people, hey, listen, you can learn even brain surgery on YouTube, but for those of you who go to YouTube as a source of education, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So that's true for me in photography, but I absolutely love the art of photography. I love learning and getting better and better and better. And I felt like I had gotten to a point in my life with my photography skills where I was really going to take some, I was going to take some risks with this. I was going to take some risks with my photography. And rather than waiting until I'm 65 or 66 and I'm having, you know, health issues and, you know, it's harder and harder for me to get around, I thought now would be the time for me to pursue uh, some of these photo projects that I wanted to do and wander around the United States or really it was going to be Europe at first, but now it's the United States and uh, work on these projects. So that's what I've decided to do. And it's a big risk for me because I don't have a lot of money stacked away. I, you know, I'm not a wealthy guy, but I do love photography and I do love being out and doing adventures and things like that. So for me, it was um, a decision I wanted to make that I wasn't going to wait any longer to do what I loved. And it's, it gets more difficult as you get older. I don't know if, if some of you are my age, maybe a little older, maybe a little younger than I am. But, you know, as you age, uh, you know, uh, it becomes sedent, being sedentary or, or, de or developing a certain amount of lethargy or inertia really sets in. And we get kind of set in our ways. And I know that I have. It's been harder and harder for me to get up and move around and do what I want to do. Partly because I'm not in the same physical shape I was 10 years ago. But also partly just because we crave comfort and we crave routine. And we crave uh, that's, you know, that the horarium or the daily grind that we have developed for ourselves. And that often battles with our desire to pursue things that we've always wanted to pursue. You know, I have friends who wanted to become musicians, wanted to become comedians, wanted to do a bunch of different things with their life and didn't get the opportunity because um, they never took the risks. And, um, and I get it. I get it. It's certainly not a put down of anybody. I understand it very, very well. And so here I was, you know, not quite retirement age at 65 or 66, but ready to take some risks. So that's what this channel is about, is about encouraging people to go out and do what they want to do, that time becomes more and more valuable the older that we get, and time goes faster. Everybody, you know, everybody knows that time, time starts to speed up as we get older. 
So I felt like I didn't have the luxury of waiting any longer to do what I do. I've had a number of health issues, you know, which is not unusual for a guy my age. I've had a number of health issues, which have sort of um, been a good thing for me to have in the sense that it's defined, it's, 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 it's kept my mortality in front of me. It's kept my, um, my knowledge that I don't, I won't last forever. And I don't have a whole lot of time left to be able to do the kind of things that I really want to do, you know, to be able to move the way I want to move and, and go where I want to go and take on some of the uh, projects, which are going to require more physical stamina, which are going to require me spending a lot of time on my feet, spend a lot of time searching things out and taking these journeys. So, um, I felt like I didn't have the luxury of waiting any longer and it was time for me to do it now. And I have to be honest with you, when I'm writing, when I'm doing my photography, I feel like I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be, doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. And it gives me such joy and happiness to do that and to be able to express myself that way. And without it, my life is is much, much less. Uh, this stabilizes me. You know, I consider it part of my spiritual life to pursue my photography, pursue my creative life. It's really, really important to me. You know, whether my work gets seen by a lot of people, whether people appreciate the work I do, whether I get accolades or anything for it is, is kind of immaterial. What's most important for me is to be in this space where I'm being creative and I'm being I'm adventurous and I'm taking risks and doing things I wouldn't normally do. And anybody who's a photographer who loves photography knows the thrill of capturing a great image. You know as soon as you press that button that you have something pretty special. And you get home and you throw it up on the computer or you develop it in the dark room and you see you know, something that really is magical that happens and oftentimes feels like we're merely a conduit for uh, or an eye that's viewing something that, that really is kind of magical, and life is that way. So when I'm in that place and I'm pursuing that or I'm planning and I'm executing these projects or doing this work, I feel really like uh, I'm where I am supposed to be and, I who, and, I'm, and I'm who I'm supposed to be. So I hope that makes sense to you. So my channel is going to be a variety of number of things. Number one is it's going to be this vlog. It's also going to be interviews with people who are photographers or who are creatives. And uh, it's about, it's going to be talking, it's going to be interviewing and talking to people who are also um, older and taking risks and doing things uh, and, and plunging forward with, with, um, with their plans despite the lethargy, despite the inertia, despite the fear of taking risks that they're out there trying to do it. And that's really what I want to encourage anybody who's got a dream, who f feels a little unfulfilled and wants to go out there and pursue it. Or maybe who just wants to live vicariously through uh, people taking risks or doing things that are creative and really enjoying that process and enjoying watching somebody else do it. It's not for everybody. What I'm taking on now, and I've realized it now that I'm, I'm ready to plunge into this thing full time, full speed, is that man, it's a lot harder to do it now than it was 10, 15 years ago. You know, it's harder to muster the energy. It's harder to muster the stamina. It's harder to stay on task. You know, I'm more I'm creakier in the morning and more aches and pains, but I'm still going to do it. Fuck it. You know, I, I love, I love life. I love people and I really want to pursue that, which makes me happy. And uh, it's taking a risk and it's also making some sacrifices too, because it takes me away from home and I've got two beautiful granddaughters that are just absolutely miraculously beautiful and wonderful. I've got two children that I'm so proud of, two, um, two um, they're, who have both have uh, spouses, my daughter-in-law and my son-in-law who I love dearly, who are just wonderful people, kind and generous and and wonderful Emily and Germach, uh two really beautiful people, and then my son and my and my daughter, who I have nothing but love and respect and admiration for. They have been far more teachers of me than I have ever been of them. So um, you know, I, I'm leaving for a while, 
and it means I'm not going to be able to spend much time, at least physically, with them. But you know, fortunately, with the, with phones and FaceTime and all the other things we have, I'll stay in touch. But um, you know, I'm going to go do this and see what I can make of myself. And so that's what the channel is about. I'll be interviewing people. I'll be doing street interviews of people and taking their portraits. I'll be putting up a lot of my still photography. Um, I'll be interviewing uh, other artists and creatives who I think bring something to the table. And I'm just going to open it up to whatever comes my way. I'll be continuing to do these daily vlogs. Having said that, I do have more equipment than just my cell phone. <laughs> I've got lavalier mics. I've got cameras, video cameras. I've got tripods. I've got all the gear that it takes to make, you know, pretty good video content. But unfortunately, it's either locked in my pickup truck, which is getting the radiator replaced, or it's locked in my trailer, which is waiting for me to pick it up with my hopefully now functional uh, 1989 Ford F-250, which leaks about a quart of oil every fill up. So anyways, that's what's going on with me today. I wanted to do this down at the lakefront here because it's a whopping 40 degrees down here and it feels so beautiful. It's been five degrees with wind chills and sub-zero. And, you know, when it gets up to 41 in Milwaukee, you feel like you should be out barbecuing in the backyard in your flip-flops and your T-shirt. So uh, it just feels great today. And it's sunny down here. And there are people out now because it's it's above freezing. And it's, it's really wonderful. So anyways, I'm going to pan around here. And I'll leave you with that. Um, you know, be kind to yourselves. Be loving. Uh, be loving to others that you come across. You know, you never know what people are going through try and keep that in mind as as you encounter them that for me is uh is something that i try and do and i'm not always successful at it but i do try and understand that people all have something that they're going through and we don't see that it's not written on them so be kind i love you guys um i'll be posting every day feel free to come back feel free to share this with other people and um i'm now going to pan around so have a wonderful day I should probably be filling this in with some really soaring music, but you get what you get right now on my budget <laughs> vlog. There you go. Isn't that beautiful? Good Lord. And there's the harbor of Milwaukee. And... Here are the Summerfest grounds. And there is the highway down to downtown. And we'll talk to you in a little bit.